All right, guys, we're going to do the first operation off here. And all we're doing is we're taking the valve and we're going to expand the top hole. We're not going to go all the way through. It doesn't help too much because this hole really matches up with the body. So you're just kind of reserving a little more air. And my thought is it might help a little more with just getting more throw backwards because it's going to let a little more air getting there is going to help push the hammer back. We're not going to go huge with it. We're not going to do that obscene thing that was there. We're just going to take the side throw bit that slips in the through hole in the front. And we're going to make this hole the same. Uh, we're doing this kind of crude. There's, there's not a real reason to really get real anal about this. So I just took a drill bit that fits through the, the through hole, squared it up in the mill. I'm going to take it out and just drill it halfway through. Reaching over every time. <laughs> That's all we're doing with that. We get the chamfer tool in there and chamfer it out. Not the chamfer tool, the deburring tool, deburr it a little bit. And there's not much more to it. We took a few pauses because it's a steel. It's some kind of stainless, maybe. Or maybe it should be regular steel. That gives us a little more flow, potentially. Gives it more. Gives us more air that can fit in the valve behind the ball. There's not much there. Every little bit's going to help. Fits in flush going down. Sorry, I know the camera was a. Uh... So that's what we're gonna do for the bolt or for the the valve. We're gonna work on the bolt next on the lathe. All right, guys. Next operation is we're gonna put an O-ring groove on the tip, which is gonna probably be the biggest help for everything that we're gonna do here. Need to go that fast. Make sure it's running. All right. Put an O-ring groove on the tip. Just use my little grooving tool that I have. Come up to the tip, and we're touching off on it. An O-ring is really about uh, 0.06 inches, so I'm just going to dial it in, and we'll make it work from there. Do it to taste till it fits right in the body. probably a little out doesn't fit yet I'm just using my dial gauge on the better part of the lathe fit yet. So I'm at 160 on my hand dial. Bring it on 10 thou. Keep guessing, guessing and checking. 
until it looks right and feels right. Still way too. That's 170. We got a lot to go. Now it's starting to look kind of like it's fitting in, but probably another 20 thou or so. We're going to keep, keep taking 10 thou bites out of it though. good mm, it's tight we're getting tight at the bottom of the bore if I blow the tip off this thing I gotta make a new tip anyway and a new structure Looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. That feels nice. It's slick, so it still slides through, but it definitely is sealing. I want to take a couple more thou out. Let me feel how the originals felt. I still want to take a little more out of it. So I'll put it back in. Not much. Just a hair. And again, not ideal. But it doesn't really deserve ideal. Took three thou out of it. There goes his Millennium sign. We gotta glue that back in. I like it. I don't want to take any more because we are getting a little tight. Let me grab a file real quick. Clean the two edges off. first part of this done. Next part of this, you zoom this out. We're going to mark where this thing sits all the way forward. We'll mark it. And we'll start machining off the back end of the bolt. Just in this section here, because I got an O-ring here and an O-ring here. I hope you can see that. I don't know where I am on my camera. So that's why I machine off this so it's less contact. That area is fine. Then I'll machine off a little bit back here, past here as well. To this point here, just cut a little weight out of it. Make it a little cleaner. And uh, I'll set this up. We're going to set it up this way. I'm going to make a mark with a marker real quick. And uh, I'll be right back with the thing backwards.
All right, guys, we put a mark on it through the feed neck. Hope you can see that little piece of purple there. Zoom in a little bit. Put a little mark on it. We are gonna take this, go in a little bit, and just cut somewhere into the back end of that mark so the ball can't get there. So the ball can't touch the raw surface and make a ramp or anything like that. But just enough to get rid of some of the, the friction if that piece of metal ever touches in the other piece of metal in the breech. Nice, decent finish. Not super happy with this aluminum. Feels like shit, the aluminum, but the finish feels pretty nice. Weird shit. So doing the same thing up here. Let's come back here and we're just gonna completely just, just wing this. There's no rules here. Need a decent chip on this side, especially. We don't want to get too there, we want to get kind of close. Call it good there. We're going for our finish pass.
don't do that. Never let it hit in hard, or else it's going to kick back on you. Uh, finishes okay. It's going to look a lot better after a bit of polish. All right, so the bolt is going to the mill next, where we're going to machine back the line for the uh, for the detent a little better. Let me get a better mill tool in there. And, uh, yeah. Kind of shitty back there. What weird aluminum this is. I'm not even sure what it is. Warm, too, for that. That's surprising. All right, next operation. Alright guys, last stop on the bolt, part of me thought, why don't I use a uh, ball nosed end mill and do it nice, try to square it up perfectly, and the other part said, nah, it's a Bob Long Millennial, let's just get it done, so we're going to use a facing mill, we're just going to bring it down a bit and face it, the thing I noticed when I ran my little marker in there, it kind of stops, not far enough back, so we're going to go farther back, so the whole ball it's always not depressed. We're going to touch it off, find it. We'll come out. Sorry. And now we know we can't touch a ball. The O-ring gland still goes behind it, so it's still going to seal up pretty well. And uh, yeah, that's it for the bolt. Where I'm gonna polish this up, get rid of the uh, the shitty looking finish on that. So still, still kind of mad about that. Garbage metal. And uh, yeah, that came out pretty decent. I don't know if you can even see that. That's not a bad finish there. We'll polish it all up. I'll deburr everything. And yeah, we'll go from there. I think that's it in the shop. Oh, I'm going to make a plug. I'm going to make a plug for this guy. Got rid of that screw because it's kind of lame. So that's next. And hold on. All right, guys. It's day two. Back downstairs. Everything's been machined. I polished everything up the way we should. I'll show you the parts that I polished. We'll just start cleaning some things up assembling the marker again and we will start from we'll do the regulator first the part i didn't show you guys that i made is i just made this little Dowron spacer 
that goes in the bottom of this reg. Just put two O-rings on it. There are 16 O-rings that go on it. Just 70 durometer. Nothing special, nothing crazy. Give it a little bit of lube. Push it right down to the bottom. And now the reg is sealed. Without any additional issues. Put a little lube on this seal, the threads. And it's gas through. Red gas, whatever you want to call it, is together. So next, let's grab the body real quick. Put the ball detent in. Tighten her down just a hair. We prepped that, so let's get a little glue. A lot in there. There's a little less glue next time. Turn that light on. That makes it better. Use our alcohol and just clean off the excess. Get a little extra there. Just use my thumbnail, get it off the aluminum. Put way too much glue on there. But that thing's not going anywhere. All right, see the bubble on Millennium again, if you had to guess. So, throw the valve body back in. Remember, we poured it the one side, so the side that we poured it has to go up. Make sure the big side's going forward. We're going to replace the O-rings on it. Let me just... I cleaned the valve with soap and water. We didn't polish the valve or anything. It doesn't really need it. It's not going to do too much that way. So this is O15 O-rings. I'm using 50 durometer because it's a sealing joint. And it can use the softer durometer to help it seal up better. So O15s. Big side up. Let's get a little lube on it. Yeah, this valve is going to work a lot nicer than the uh, other thing you had in there. Big port up, small port down. Just slide to hit the stop. Just want to oil the, the set screw because it's just steel. Set screw in place, valves in, next piece is this one, I replaced the o-rings on this already, didn't have to, they were in good shape, but o-rings are very cheap, put that there, I forgot, we got to do this first, 
I did polish the back side, the, the side of the cup seal that slides in the in the valve because it was a little rough. It definitely felt not the best. So I polished it up just so it slides a little nicer. If I was really being anal, I could have polished the valve too, but it, it is a spider. So let's make sure we get the polishing compound off of it. This stuff's not going to be as destroyed by the polishing compound because it is steel versus the much softer aluminum we normally polish stuff on or brass. But it's still a good idea. Put a thin sheen of oil on here. We don't want to grease this because we got to leave that porthole open. So we don't want the grease to have any effect that's going to cause that a negative issue. Put that in. Uh, where's the screw? So those two little guys are for that. That's for that. Make sure the screw for this. Tighten it down lightly. Ah, we're going to put one of these uh, shitty, doesn't really work, but works. Uh... Hold on a second. Getting a phone call. Sorry about that. So we're back real quick. I just shoved on the, uh, the little keeper. Guess they're a little afraid of vibrations, so they put those on. Just tighten it down. We don't gotta go too tight. The uh, expansion chamber. Lube it up. Fresh O15 O-ring on there. And the front side down there is good. We'll put the hammer in, so I can find her. The hell, there it is. Shiny now, we polished the hammer as best we could. It is hardened steel, so it can be polished, but not incredibly. You now this is gonna touch an aluminum part, so let's make sure our polishing compound is off of there. And there's definitely polish in this O-ring groove. Looking a little better. I'm just using my nails to like get in the two little corners of the groove. And the center normally cleans out pretty easy. Definitely got some polish stuck on this side, so we're just gonna scrape it out a little bit. Get all that shit out of there.
right. That groove's clean now. Nothing special. We're using 016 O ring on this. We are not going to grease it, we're going to oil it. These guns should be kept oiled. Ready to slide in there beautifully. Put the spring. We polished up the spring guide as well, just because it's aluminum surface that rests against that back of that spring. Maybe we can pick up a little bit with no, less friction on that. That's the idea, anyway. We're gonna do this. And uh getting called, I'll be right back. Yeah. Put that, put the bumper in. Non-field strippable setup back in. Oop. Double me. All right. It's coming back together. Most of the internals in. Bolt is next. The velocity adjuster can go in as well. All right, so next part and the last part to go on the body is the bolt. This we polish the shit out of. And the anodizing that was on it was really crappy. It was really soft, so I, I kind of feel like this isn't even 6061. I don't know what kind of aluminum it is, but it doesn't take anodizing too well. Didn't like being machined that well. So it's anyone's guess. But did polish up pretty nice. Sat on for a while with it. So this we're going to use O15s, and I'm going to use quad seals because they slide a little nicer. Make sure that they are orientated correctly. It's going to reduce the friction a little bit of the sliding seal. I don't know if I can get the front one in though. I think I gotta switch over to uh they don't feel right. The tolerance on here is a little screwy, so they don't feel right. I'm gonna abandon these quadrants and switch back over to uh O15 O rings, just standard O rings. Hold on a second, I'm gonna try the 50 durometer first. Let's give us a little bit of a beneficiary if we do.
Yeah, it's a lot smoother. Definitely want to grease the back end of this bolt. Make sure I put a touch on the front O-ring, but wipe off most of it. I gotta find line up the holes all right that's sliding perfectly the velocity adjuster is really hard. I wonder what happened here. That is tight. I wonder if these are going through too far. If this one might be going through too far. Yep, that was it. So that needs... Much better. Alright, so that needs one of these. I have one, I don't know why I didn't put it on. These little lock washer. That's good to go. Put the frame on. Big one in the ass. I guess the lock washers are, uh, they were used in these because these, these markers have a lot of vibration in them when they're shooting. Because they're, they're kind of, it's sort of a violent shot out of these. Big pressure, short bursts. So that's going well. A little, oil, a little lube on the top here. That almost falls perfectly. Let's see if we can benefit that a little bit. These 015s, I have it right here. Perfect. Always hate when that doesn't line up right. Wow, brass line barrel, the stock one. If you can see that, that's a nice touch. Most of the way through. I don't know if that's a stock barrel or what kind of barrel that is, but it was on the one I had. All right, that looks uh, like a Bob Long Millennial or Millennium. See how it feels on air. See if we can get it to cycle correctly. This is my highest pressure output tank. It's like 800 PSI. Well. It's 
take the velocity adjuster out. Feels hard, but I'm running into issues with that right now. Recocking issues. Just trying to recock, but it's not getting there. So I might need a fatter O-ring. I hear a tiny hiss down the valve. I don't check to see what the pressure is out on this tank. Alright guys, unfortunately, I don't have any air, or enough air in my higher pressure tank in order to get this thing to cycle. It definitely needs an 800-ish PSI output tank at the, at the least because it's still set up as a CO2 marker. Uh, it's... Really, it just needs high pressure. That's what you what you want out of these is high pressure air for this kind of thing. So, when we go to the field, when I give this back to them, I will try to take a cell phone video and uh, add it to the end of this video. And, uh, you know, without that, it's in a better place than it was when it got here. It's not going to chew a ball to 10 apart anymore. So, it's going to keep the balls in, which is was a huge problem with it earlier. Uh, we have a velocity adjuster on it now, and uh, everything seems to be running right. The bolt's smooth. It's not going to take much more drag to bring it back, but it's going to seal up the front better, which is, is huge for getting velocity out of this thing, especially with a tank that's 800 PSI. Because originally tanks were 800 PSI, or air tanks were made 800 PSI, because the natural pressure of a compressed air tank when it's at like, 70 degrees or 60 degrees or something like that is around 800 to 850 psi so that's why the, the original high pressure air tanks were, were all set to it preset into the 800s was to mimic the the co2 that was supposed to be used but co2 if it gets hot if you have a 90 100 degree day that temperature that pressure in it can go up to uh, over a thousand psi in a steely tank or in a in a CO2 tank, which is, is drastically different, and you get wild velocity fluctuations in CO2 because of that. And when it freezes going in the line, you get those those terrible velocity, you get those terrible inconsistencies because it's a self-regulated gas, but it's very temperature dependent. Where the HPA has a regulator in it, so it's a lot less temperature dependent, and it gives you a consistent output. But these older markers, especially these blowbacks, Unless you designed it to run on a a lighter, uh, you know, less of a, a PSI, it's just not going to work on something super low for, for no reason other than to do it. So we'll get a high pressure tank on this thing and we'll get a shooting video of this thing eventually. But that's it for now with the Bob Lowe Millennial. Uh, you know what to do if you like this video. If you didn't like it, you know what to do as well. It's not the, the coolest gun we ever did. But... It's neat in its own right, and uh, I think we did it pretty well. Let us know how you like it. See you guys.